So let's delve more deeply into a socio-environmental system example. And let's start with one in which state changes can be actually traced to some triggers. Now I'm going to use an example I fictionalized a little. It concerns a rural socio-environmental system in Indonesia. Initially, its state could be described as one in which prosperous people are living sustainably in a forested system. They depend on timber from the forest for income, but they also depend on the forest for farming. So you can see that rice is actually grown in and amongst the forest, and both trees and crops are prospering. However, if the government changed a policy that resulted in a shortage of land to farmers, we can see some immediate social impacts. With less farmland available to them, they have less to sell at market. And what this does is to increase their poverty. And this, in turn, leads to households logging in areas that were formerly off limits. And that's because some of the wood can be sold for income that they've lost from farming. But they also typically burn some in their homes for cooking. So this is extra, this extra logging leads in turn to less forest, and that makes it increasingly harder for the villagers to get income. So poverty is further increased, and you can see that feedback. In other words, the onset of poverty initially due to a policy change influenced the future state of the people, that is worse, poverty, and the future state of the forest, which is now smaller and also more degraded. I might add that with deforestation, the feedbacks that degrade the system socially and environmentally are further exacerbated by other feedbacks within the biophysical parts of the system. Specifically, changes in hydrology due to deforestation lead to reduced soil health as well as reduced forest regrowth. So that little example illustrates how one change can have cascading effects throughout all parts of a complex system. It also provides an example of an entire socio-environmental system moving in a new state. The people, the natural resources, and their interactions became very different. Its behavior emerged over time. Again, this is called its emergent behavior. The patterns, properties, or characteristics that emerge over time are due to the interactions, feedbacks, and resulting changes. This characteristic of complex adaptive systems in which internal changes in the system result in emergent properties is why I mentioned earlier that they're sometimes called self-organizing systems. And once again, I note that while these systems aren't fully deterministic, they aren't just randomly or organized. So we do work to build models that can at least approximate the system dynamics. Identifying the functions though, to use in a model like this is non-trivial, but there are strategies that can be used to help. 